goat milk in my, as my coffee creamer. Goat milk is actually a lot more easy on the digestive tract than cow's milk, so I was just using a splash of coke, uh, goat milk as my coffee creamer. And then uh, I was trying to get everything dialed in with my diet about six days beforehand, and uh, my chiro, Dr. G's, like, he's like, well, get off the goat milk completely, you know? I'm like, okay, I didn't say anything to him about it. I just happened to go buy a little thing of soy milk coffee creamer, started using it within probably 10 to 14 days, I felt like I was new. <laughs> it was not good. I went from like feeling like really awesome, hitting workouts hard, strength was good, looking good. All of a sudden, I'm like, wanted to watch Oprah or something. That was my last <laughs> like, I was like, no, I, I, I really felt like some, something was, I had to increase my testosterone level. Like I, you know, I didn't really feel like coming up here and training. I noticed I was like holding more fat and water on my abs, um, just some other things going on. I'm like, Doc, I'm like, something's going on. I'm like, I think I was freaking out because I was probably about, it's probably about like five or six weeks out from the race. I was like, crying. Um, yeah, I was like five or six weeks after the race at this point. I'm like, something's wrong with me. I'm like, I don't feel like how I've been feeling. Something's wrong. He's like, well, what have you done differently? Have you write everything down that I've been eating? He's like, it's a soy milk coffee creamer. So I, he's like, coconut milk coffee creamer. I'm like, all right, switch it back. Within a week, I was a man again. <laughs> None of that. So uh, that just shows you what you eat can really affect your body without a doubt. So all things to consider. Uh, let's look at some of the other handouts here. Yeah, no, this is the uh, this uh, a custom zone prescription that I had printed out. This was just for a what do we got here? A 135 pound female, 20 percent body fat. Um, spit out for having 17 blocks a day. And I just kind of did the math for you guys for this person to see. Everybody say one block, seven grams of protein, nine carbs, three grams of fat. Multiply that by the total number of blocks per day. That gives you your total grams of protein, carbs, and fat per day. And ideally, I think for here, the average person for general health and well-being, like I said, I'm adding, I'm eating a fifth meal a day just because I'm trying to get extra protein in. I'd say for the average person here, and especially if you're trying to lean up, I think four meals per day. We're saying not big meals, but mid-sized meals. Um, about every four hours should probably be ideal and it should probably be pretty easy to accommodate your lifestyle with, with work and everything like that too. You know, if you have a regular day job, eat breakfast at 7 a.m. before you go to work, you're eating lunch around 11.30 or 12, kind of have a, you know, a snack around 4 or so in the afternoon, come here train in the evening, and then have dinner after that. So spread, try to spread everything out about, you know, every four hours. Um, like I said, if it spits out that you're having, you should have 100 and 30 grams or 120 grams of protein per day, just divide that by four, stagger it out about 30 grams of protein per meal. If you don't have exactly 30 grams of protein per meal, it's not the end of the world. One, might, one meal might be short a few grams, one meal it might have an extra. You don't have to be completely militant with it, but just try to maintain as close to those numbers as you can, and it should kind of balance itself out you know, in the end. Uh, next thing is the uh, ta table of fruit and fruits and sugars. This is basically what we were talking about. Uh, different types of sugar within fruit, glucose, sucrose, fructose, so on and so forth. They'll have the type of fruit and what the uh, type of sugar content is uh, within that fruit. And like I said, post-workout, definitely want to see you guys consuming carbohydrates post-workout, but you definitely want to stay away from the ones that are high fructose. I remember for a while there, before I like, got clued in, I was actually having raisins post-workout, which is just pretty much pure fructose. And I'm like, oh, I'm not supposed to do that, so I switched it out. Like I said, I'm doing coconut water now. Before that, I've been doing uh, yeah, I've done mangoes, I've done bananas, pineapple, um, what else? Blueberries, um, all your dark purple blueberries are really good because especially like when you work out, it's actually gonna cause your body to become acidic. So it's a great time to have some kind of alkaline producing fruit, like dark berries, plums, things like that. And what, what's the good sugar after workout? Uh, glucose. glucose. Basically everything eventually turns into glucose anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's like people talking about complex carbohydrates. Well, eventually your body's going to break it down into glucose anyway at some point. It's just how long it takes to, to get there. The post-workout, you want to try to get that glucose loading effect as soon as possible. If you're trying to watch your carbohydrates, uh, if you really wanted to get technical with it too, like let's say that you were really trying to lean out and you were only doing 50 carbs, carbs per day and you wanted to stack it, stack it I would do 30 post-workout and divvy those other 20 out over your other three meals per day. So if you're trying to really lean out, I would just set your carbohydrate consumption as much as possible post workout. All right? And then, like, a lot of people are like, oh, well, I need to eat so I have energy in my workout. It's not really like, what are you eating two or three hours, or an hour, or two hours, or three hours before your workout that's going to give you energy on that workout? It's really like, what have you been doing cumulatively, you know, the day before and each day before that leading up to it, right? So, like, whatever I did on, however I eat Thursday is really going to affect me on my Friday workout. 
for the most part. With the certain to say, like I said, if I eat a piece of red meat at lunchtime or my gut, some kind of crappy inflammatory food, I'm going to feel sluggish. But as far as an energy standpoint, kind of like what did you really do the day before and leading up to that? It's kind of you, you know, so it's only not bad to eat late at night, like you say you eat lunch on eight o'clock. Yeah, as long as, it's, as long as you're not having a box of spaghetti, you know what I mean? So it's like if you're going <laughs> on a piece of lean meat, lean meat or fish, vegetable and salad, absolutely not. <laughs> Was that? No, it's Yeah. <laughs> no, no Klondike's first one. Uh, there's a good uh, document here. It's called the most important foods to eat organic. Obviously, eating organic can be kind of expensive, so uh, Dr. G's kind of put together a document that shows you what foods you should prioritize eating organic if you're on a budget and can only eat, afford to eat certain foods that are organic. Your meats are definitely on there. Pretty much a rule of thumb with like fruits and vegetables. If it's a fruit that has like a thick skin that you don't eat, like say like a watermelon or a banana, it's not as important to go organic on it. But if it's something that has a thin skin, it's very susceptible to insects, probably heavyweight pesticide spray like an apple, grapes, so peaches, things like that. You probably want to try to do those organic if it's available and if you can. All right? And the thing is, like you know, with the whole organic thing too, not only is it the pesticides that could be potentially are sprayed on the food, it's the fertilizer that's put on the soil that, 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 that those crops are absorbing, which is ultimately getting into your food too. So there's a lot of non-organic fertilizers in there that are basically derivatives of petrochemicals, petroleum products. So if you want to have some petroleum-based fertilizers sprayed on the, the field that you're getting your you know oranges from or whatever, like, well, do you really want that? Probably not the best thing, like the best thing for you. Yeah. So, I mean, where to drink is there most paid to alcohol? Um, I know what tequila I've heard. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, um, Rob's big thing is it's called the NorCal Margarita. So it's um, it's two shots of 100% uh, agave gold tequila. My favorite is El Hedor. Yeah. <laughs> um, two ounces of soda water and one whole lime squeeze in there. So in his book, he kind of goes into why, you, what, what the soda water does, what the lime juice does. I think the lime juice has some kind of alkaline effect, balances out the you know, acidity of the tequila. I don't know, it, it, it's a good drink though, I like it. So basically, two shots cold tequila, two shots soda water, one whole lime on the rocks. And so the like the soda water, water gets you drunk, it gets the alcohol into your body faster, the lemon neutralizes the liquor, and that's the whole point of the lime. Yeah, I mean, uh, I gotta go test drive a couple of them tonight, I'll let you know. Uh, <laughs> so, um, and then, you know, Another thing, like with beer, um, there's a gluten-free beer. Like I said, you know, e even if you guys, like, like I said, try to take this information. Obviously, those of you guys that are doing the Paleo Challenge, obviously, you ride with this for eight weeks. And if you're not doing the challenge, give it at least 30 days, you know, and, and see what it does for you. Pretty much can guarantee you're going to look, feel, and perform better, without a doubt. And if you find that like strict Paleo is too much for you, at least like going dairy-free, gluten-free, you're going to get worlds of health benefits from that too. And like what I notice is like. If I was to go out and eat a bunch, I like baked goods, I like sweets, chocolate, stuff like that. But if I go out and eat, was to eat like, then I eat, I eat excessively too, right? Like I, like I like cupcakes. So if I was to go out and eat four like wheat-based, wheat flour-based cupcakes from Kroger or Publix, they're gonna stick to my stomach. I'm gonna get sick. I'm gonna feel gross for probably a couple days. But I can go to Whole Foods and buy a four-pack of gluten-free brown rice flour-based cupcakes, eat all four, and it doesn't really do anything. So I'm not saying you guys should go eat four cupcakes this time. I'm not advocating that. But you know, when you're in maintenance mode, sure, you can kind of treat yourself a little bit. You know what I mean? It is worth it if you haven't tried it. Yeah. <laughs> but like I said, going dairy-free and gluten-free, you will definitely feel better as a result. You know, like uh, my grandmother just died from cancer a few months ago. Her brilliant doctors are like basically told her, just eat whatever you want. You know, just gotta get calories in there. But like she kept, she's eating all those crap crackers and just drinking milk, and she's all you could see and achy and just like. She wasn't getting better, and I kind of came in, and I helped her out with her diet. She definitely felt better until she died, but at least she felt better, you know? I mean, and then the result was the same, but at least she wasn't miserable. So um, just the diet advice that they give people, I mean, you know, and if you don't think milk or all that crap, I mean, just start drinking milk, a couple glasses of milk a day, and just tell me if you don't get you can see or you start getting red spots, you see it. What's funny is, like, you know, Laura, Ryan's wife, you know, works with Jay Christopher's, and for a while, like this is like prior to three years ago for me doing paleo. I used to go there every Sunday morning and get the pantry piece with like pancakes, chocolate milk, like all this crap. And I always wonder like why my gut was bloated out, why my nose was stuffed up, why my face was all red and splotchy like afterwards. And then like, you know, that. You know, obviously thanks to Dr. G and discovering paleo and all that stuff. And I say, you know, not to say that I would never have that again, but now having it 
it's not really worth it all the time. Like I said, if I'm gonna cheat, I'd rather go cheat with a gluten-free baked good. I think they taste pretty much just as good, especially those cupcakes. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't feel, I don't feel horrible with those either. You know? but if I, like I said, the, the dessert I had on Saturday night, loaded up with gluten, I felt horrible afterwards. I had the brownie at Outback, which is gluten-free on Sunday night. I felt fine. It's probably like brown rice, I think it's brown rice flour. So, you know, like, you know, rice is a grain, so it's technically not paleo, but it has a neutral inflammatory effect on the body, and it's gluten-free, so it's not, you know, if you're going to eat, you know, some kind of processed flour, probably brown rice flour is probably your best bet to go. There's a lot of good, like, gluten-free, you know, pancake mixes out there, and, you know, cake mixes and stuff like that, so um, it's a good way to minimize the damage, and, like, obviously choosing coconut milk or almond milk over cow's milk, you know. So, uh, like I said, take it out of your diet. Tell me if you don't lose fat, feel better, less achy, less stuffy nose, less skin issues, things like that. You know, I think back to when I was a kid and, you know, I did acne or broke out. It's because I was eating processed food, drinking milk, you know, refined grain, stuff like that. I'm sure a little bit of it is hormonal, but obviously what I was eating was making it worse, you know. And, and I notice that now, like, I mean, there's been times where... I've gotten off track and ate really bad for a couple of days, like when Girl Scout cookies come around in March or whatever. I'll, I'll break out from it. Two, two, two boxes in one day. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it was? Three. Oh, three. <laughs> <laughs> Samoas, the next. But no, like, 